10. Hydrogen burnoff igniters initiate. Seven, six, five, four stage engine start. Three, two, one. Boosters in ignition. One, boosters in ignition. And liftoff of Artemis One. Two, one. Boosters in ignition. And liftoff of Artemis One. Boosters in ignition. And liftoff of Artemis One. We rise together. One. Boosters in ignition. And liftoff of Artemis One. We rise together. Back to the moon and beyond. And we had eye-watering performance of the Space Launch System rocket. Uh, the software for the Launch Control Center and the handover of the command and control, again, uh, met all of our expectations. The ignition overpressure and sound suppression system uh, to uh, dampen the acoustic shock and, and keep the uh, deck of the mobile launcher um, uh, protected from the, uh, from the flames of the, uh, of the space launch system as it, as it lifted off, performed as expected. Uh, the mobile launcher umbilical releases were all within uh, specification and performed as expected and the mobile launcher structure itself um, held up well and, and the structural inspections have all passed there. Uh, if we could roll the video of the drone footage of the mobile launcher, um, this will, is essentially a top-down look of the entire mobile launcher and uh, this is the side that faces the, um, the rocket as it lifted off. You can see all the umbilicals in the retracted position and we will go all the way down to the deck of the mobile launcher here. And, um, you know, we do have a, a little bit of discoloration simply from the heat of the rocket, but um, all of the interfaces uh, are, are in good shape. The uh, mobile launcher itself is, uh, it has a little bit of damage to it, but it will be ready to fly um, the uh, crewed launch on Artemis II. And here we are looking down into the flame trench. Uh, the damage that we did see uh, pertain to uh, really just a couple of areas um, on the zero deck. If, if we could pull up the, um, the image of the uh, elevator doors, we, we did, um, all right, so here we're seeing the image of the uh, mobile launcher deck. Uh, we have exhaust that comes out of the solid boosters that is right at 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> had a large amount of water come out of the water birds and the uh, water sound suppression system to, to keep the, the deck protected. You can see here that the uh, water sound suppression uh, did a great job with the exception of right around the edges of the flame trench. Uh, if we could go to the next photo, uh, and here you're simply seeing some of the paint, paint discolored and paint removed. This is the entire deck uh, of the mobile launcher and you see the two tail service mast umbilicals um, that, are, that are in the foreground on the right. Um, our, our launch director, Charlie Blackwell Thompson, says she walked into the, into the uh, tail service mast umbilicals and they were pristine inside. Uh, so all of the enclosures and, uh, and all of the uh, close up activities um, to, uh, to basically button this thing up as the rocket was lifting off um, protected all the, all the hardware there. Uh, if we, there's our elevator doors. Um, the uh, elevator system is uh, not functioning right now. Uh, we, uh, we had the world's most powerful rocket and, and, and the pressure uh, basically blow the doors off of our elevators. Um, this is why it took a little longer uh, to inspect the, uh, the mobile launcher. Uh, it is a very tall structure and right now the elevators are inoperable and we need to get those back in the service. Uh, and then if we look at, at the next photo, um, I, I love this photo. Uh, when I saw it, I was like, wow. Um, this is one of the cameras on the zero deck and the mobile launcher uh, being looked at um, from the 274 foot level on one of the towers. So um, you can see, again, the heat of the uh, boosters um, scorching the camera. The camera uh, housing survived, but uh, it just goes to show the environment there on the, on the, on the zero deck. Um, is, is not the friendliest when, when you have the world's most powerful rocket lifting off. Um, again, that said, we did um, a thorough inspection of the mobile launcher and it, is, it has passed. They're the only items that are noteworthy of damage are the ones that, that uh, I've, I've shown you there. We did have two cameras out. We also did have um, some damage to uh, pneumatic lines associated with uh, gaseous nitrogen and gaseous, gaseous helium. And um, 
that in turn caused the uh, oxygen sensors on the pad to show that there were low oxygen readings until we got the uh, until we got the uh, leaks in the pneumatic lines isolated, which is why it took a little longer to gain access out of the pad. Um, in terms of, uh, did we find any flight items? You don't wanna find flight items at the, at the pad, right? Uh, in terms of, did we find flight items? We found two. Uh, the first was uh, the booster throat, pr throat plug material, which uh, is purposefully um, uh, expelled from the throat of each booster. Uh, at liftoff when, when the boosters ignite, uh, and we did find that in the pad perimeter. Um, we did need a little bit of time to map that out. That is a very normal thing, finding the booster throat plug material. And then we did find one piece of the, um, the uh, 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 RTV material from the Orion spacecraft. It is unclear whether that was actually liberated during launch or whether that was uh, released during the, during the hurricane, uh, but it was found on the infield. So. Overall, uh, again, a very clean uh, system. The, uh, the exploration ground systems uh, exceeded our performance. We did have a little bit of damage and the, and the mobile launcher will be ready to support um, uh, Artemis II and we had accounted for that uh, previously in our, in our replan and our budget um, for uh, uh, the time between Artemis I and II.